GPS. I don't see your screen though. Hi guys, this is Samir Mohammed. Can you see my screen? I'm already sharing it. Give me a second here. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick Quinn. I'm our senior account executive here at AQL. And some of you I may have talked to on the phone and maybe a few of you I met at the Las Vegas conference, the SharePoint North America. So we're happy to have you at our latest Tech Talk Tuesday. And so briefly before Samir starts, just give you some highlights about AQL. Um, of course, we're a Microsoft Gold partner. And uh, for those of you that may get these, we do, sh we do uh, take SharePoint uh, development um, uh, services. We're uh, a minority business partner. We've been doing this for uh, almost uh, a little more than 12 years now. We have 30 developers on staff. We've done hundreds of deployments and uh, migrations, and uh, again, several um, projects under our belt. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to Samir Mohammed and enjoy uh, modern versus classic user interfaces. Thank you, Patrick. So guys, without wasting much time, without wasting any more time, let's just get started with uh, our slideshow over here about modern UI versus classic UI. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me for this webinar once again. And my name is Samir Mohammed. I'm the SharePoint principal at AQL Technologies, 20 years of IT experience, implementing SharePoint since 2003. Ask me for any SharePoint certification. I probably might have it somewhere. And here's my contact information, email, LinkedIn, Twitter, and blog. Please send me uh, a Twitter or a LinkedIn request. I would love to get connected with you. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about modern versus UI, modern versus classic UI, some of the new features, and we're going to talk about modern search experience. Uh, we're going to talk about on-prem versus online, and site design features for site design templates for modern UI. And finally, we're gonna talk about how does the migration from, how does the migration actually work? Uh, and how does the migration really work? And when you take a look at the migration, you're gonna see, and when you look at the migration, you're gonna see how, uh, how, there's, how there's a whole big migration coming. Uh, and finally, I'm going to talk about some final thoughts on the modern UI and and more kind of like, you know, what I personally think, you know, where Microsoft is heading with the modern UI. So the next question really is what exactly is modern UI? And before I jump over to, uh, and before I jump over to uh, my demo session, I just want to talk about it. When I started putting this webinar together, I did not think I would have enough time to talk even for like an hour. But as I kept digging, I was surprised to see how much there is to educate and share on the modernization of SharePoint. And there's so much more that Microsoft is pushing out that there's got to be some serious education on the modern UI. There's a new migration coming, which is the classic to modern UI. All your sites, and when I say the classic sites, when I say the classic pages, it is not the the classic 
SharePoint 2007 pages, but the classic pages that you actually see in SharePoint 20, but the pages that you see in SharePoint 2013, uh, SharePoint Online, a lot of those pages are, are the classic pages. Modern, ex modern page experience was released in 2016, and initially I hated it, but now that I'm used to it for the past couple of years, I just love where Microsoft is heading with it. And one of the most important things about modern pages is the fact that they're responsive, out of the box, and mobile friendly. You can now browse them on your cell phone. Modern pages are fast. They're easy to author. You can support rich multimedia content. Additionally, pages look great on your device in a browser or from within the SharePoint mobile app as well. There's, uh, there's a whole new bunch of modern web parts that I'll show you as well, which comes only with the modern site. There's a new SharePoint framework that developers can build custom web parts on, which is the SPFX framework. And finally, the modern experience started with OneDrive and was later adopted by SharePoint. And these are the three pages, three places where in fact, modern team sites, modern list and library experiences, and modern site pages. So in my next slide, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, and show you real fast. I wanna do a real quick poll as well. I wanna see where everybody stands, who's using uh, which version of SharePoint, uh, modern versus classic UI. But before we get into that, I just want to show you this real quick picture. And after this, there's going to be a lot more demos. So here's the thing. If you're actually, if you already know the modern UI, if you have already been using the modern UI for a little bit of time or for a long period of time, even then stick around because I still want to show you, there's so much information there. I still want to show you some ways of migrating. I still want to show you about modern search, about some of the new tools which are out there for mass migration as well. And what are the new features? So there's a lot that I'll be covering, even if you're already familiar with some of these features of modern UI. On the left, what you see is uh, the classic UI, okay, which is pretty classic, even though it's SharePoint, you know, 2013, and a lot of the pages in SharePoint Online as well. And but on the right hand side, you see the modern UI. And the first question that I usually get is, hey, by the way, as far as questions are concerned. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm gonna try answering those questions as time progresses. I'll try answering all of them. If I can't answer all of them, I'm gonna post it on my blog. I'm gonna post the questions answer with, with answers on my blog right next to this video as well. Yes, this video is going to be available on my, uh, on my blog site as well. So the first question that I usually get is, hey, Samer, where exactly is the ribbon in the modern UI? So the question is that there's no ribbon in the modern UI, you know, unlike the previous UI, the classic UI where you could click on the ribbon, there really is no ribbon anymore. Uh, so now I just want to go ahead and do a real quick poll. And give me a second here. Uh, and these polls are really easy. So the first poll is, which version of SharePoint do you guys use? Uh, hopefully you guys can see my poll. So I'm gonna let this running for another 15 seconds. All right, thank you. And so hopefully you can see my screen here. So I see that 67% are using SharePoint Online. 6% are using 2016. 24% uh, are using 2013. And there are still a few, 3% which are using SharePoint 2010. All right, sounds pretty good. I'm gonna have a real quick poll over here again, which is, which version do you prefer, classic versus modern? All right, so I got I got the answers back. There's uh, almost 70% using classic, and there is 30% using modern. All right, 
So that tells a lot about the value that this webinar can provide to you. So, so stay tuned, please. We're going to cover a lot about the modern UI. The next screen is one of the biggest thing is on the smartphone itself. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, you know, AQL had implemented responsiveness in SharePoint Classic pages to make sure that they are mobile friendly. And, and that used to take a lot of effort. Uh, it used to really take, you know, uh, CSS frameworks like, like uh, SAS or, I'm sorry, or it, not CSS frameworks, but Bootstrap and a lot of other frameworks to actually go ahead and implement responsiveness. And, and there used to be a lot of investment, but now that's not the case anymore. Everything is out of the box, is mobile friendly and responsive. Modern sites are built with mobile usage in mind. You can browse the site from tablets, cell phones, or anywhere. So now you don't even have to use the mobile apps. You can just access the sites from the browser. Now, mobile access is just not nice to have uh, anymore, but a mandatory thing. You know, uh, personally, I access pretty much everything from my cell phone. So again, the, so the thing is that if you can, if you want to access any of this uh, modern pages right from your cell phone itself, it's going to be much faster and better than even accessing from the mobile app. And I'll show that to you as well within a second. So let's get started with some of the basic features of the modern UI, and you'll be surprised how much more easier it is to use. Give me a second here. So hopefully everybody can see the browser screen on my machine. And uh, so in here, pretty much what I have is, is our SharePoint AQL website anyways. Uh, this website pretty much just shows you the list, the, the AQL practices, the AQL practice that we have, which is SharePoint.net, Microsoft Dynamics, Yadam, Power BI, and a few other practices. Uh, <clears throat> But the main thing that I want to show you is I want to go over to one of the hub sites. By the way, this is a hub site as well. Uh, and I'm not going to dig much deeper into hub sites. I've done a webinar just last month on hub sites. But let's get started with the document libraries, the list and the libraries first. Uh, remember the first thing that I mentioned where the modern, modernness hits is the list of libraries. One of the most beautiful things to start with that I've seen over here is that uh, I can, if I'm actually looking at, oops, sorry. So if I'm actually looking at the list and library interface over here, the first thing is I can I can adjust the column size. This is, you know, I think that this is one of the major, not major, but one of the decent features. I can definitely adjust the column size and this can actually be done dynamically. Uh, second thing is that I can just add these columns right off the bat right here. Not a big thing, but hey, you know what? It just lets me add columns right here, and it, these columns could be anything as as basic as single line of text. So description, and I'm just gonna save this while it's here. So it's pretty dynamic. I can add the columns right then and there, and then they just appear right here. One of the other things is uh, one of the other things is I can apply. I can do grouping right over here itself. So if I'm actually looking at group by modified, then hey, you know what? I can just go ahead and, and group the whole thing by modified uh, or group any of these other columns by modified. So pretty much I can apply grouping right here itself. And when I do this grouping, it's pretty dynamic. Uh, the grouping just kicks in right then and there itself. Customizing these, these views is pretty easy. All I do is that just click on this option and then click Save File It, and I can just overwrite it over the same view itself. So any changes that I do over here, they're going to be overwritten on the same view itself. Filter is also one of the major things over here. And uh, I can apply filters. So let's just take off the modern UI right here. And uh, give me one second over here. Uh, filters is pretty pretty impressive. It's uh, uh, really easy. And if you just give me one second, I think I have some more information, a different document library that I want to show you over here with some more columns. Yeah, so let's take a look at this 
this dark environment, which is again the modern UI. This is the communication side. And in here, what I get to do is that I get to apply the filters. And you're going to see how beautiful it is to apply filters. Click on active and then just click on filter by. And then a pane on the right hand side it opens up and I can actually select any value that I want. I'm just going to say yes, get, click on apply. And it just doesn't stop over there, but I can now go ahead and apply multiple filters at the same time while I'm analyzing the data. And so let's just say all these documents are certain templates. You know, some of them are managed services templates, some of them are migration templates, some of them are power templates. And if I just want to go ahead and sort that through, and some of these are for SharePoint Online, and some of these are for SharePoint On-Prem. And if I want to filter that out, I can go ahead and apply more filters. And it's just pretty beautiful. I just love it. So I have three filters that I have just applied, which is active, category, SharePoint versions. And depending on how, and depending on how I select this, you're going to see that it affects right over here itself. So if I want to see governance documents, then a third row, I can see the third row. So the filter is pretty dynamic and it's being applied as I actually choose these options right here. I think that this is just, just awesome, you know, just applying the filter right on the fly itself. This is, uh, you know, this is just one of one of the major things, just one of the major features. Uh, so uncheck this filter right here, and then the filter section disappears. Uh, another very important thing that I really love about this modern UI, and and it's just not there in the classic UI, is I can pin these documents. Yes, classic UI, take this. I can pin these documents. up to the top, try doing that in Classic UI. And I can have multiple documents that I can pin or unpin. And so right now I have these three documents that I have pinned up in the top. And also there's, a, there's another very important thing, which I just love it, is the properties pane. If I select this document here, and if I click on this small little information, open the details pane right over here, or I can just right click as well, then it shows me this whole section, which is about the properties of this document. And to start with number one, I can preview the document right over here in the section itself. It just loads up really fast. And then I can see you know, all the details over here. The second thing is I can see statistics, how many views, what are the three viewers. I can see the access also, who's got permissions to this. And right, over here, I can manage permissions for this document as well. Stop sharing this document, or just advance permissions, or I can just go ahead and apply more permissions over here. And if you scroll down to the property section, I can actually edit the values right here itself, which is SB migration template for SharePoint Online. And there's no save button, just click anywhere, and then it just gets automatically saved. Uh, keep scrolling down, and hey, you know what? I'm just thinking that, you know what? It's not going to be yes, but it's going to be, it's not going, it's not an active document anymore, and I click on no. And it has reflected, the change has reflected right over here. Instantaneously, the change kicks in, which is really beautiful, and I can see that it's just reflected back to yes. Scrolling down, I can see what are the recent changes. Who has done recent changes? I'm, I was actually working on Sunday, yes. So I've actually done some changes on Sunday. And I can click on the version settings, and it actually shows me the versions as well. And down at the bottom is some more you know, generic uh, information about this document, like the document type, modified, cat type. So overall, this properties pane does a lot. You don't really have to click on it and go in details anymore. Also, if I click on multiple documents, look at that. It actually lets me edit, bulk edit the properties of these documents. I'm going to say all these are going to be active. And if there is a certain category that I want to choose, I'm just going to say migration. And uh, you know, all of them are going to be shared on online, hit on save. So this is actually mass uploading these features and all these have actually updated at the same time. So hopefully you guys are getting <clears throat> the feel of the modern UI. 
And uh, sorry. So hopefully you guys are getting the feel of the modern UI. And uh, sorry about that. And uh, so these are these are some of the high level features. These are some of the features that you're gonna love. Uh, and I want to show a couple of the things here. Just uncheck all of these. Uh, let's go to my list over here. This is the contact list. And I can click on uh, on an edit or a new document here. And when I click on the new document, uh, this is a new. Uh, you know, this is a new list form page for entering any information. Uh, and the same thing when I actually click on edit as well, because the same the same form pops up. It's not the traditional form anymore. And the best part, also the best part about it is that when I click on customize, it actually opens up Power Apps. So there's a there's a solid integration with Power Apps to customize these forms. Uh, for the sake of time that we have on hand, I'm not going to do Power Apps. I have done Power Apps since webinars in the past, and you can actually check my uh, my my uh, webinars, and there's a whole recorded video on that. So let's just go back to so let's just go back to the list forms, and I just showed you how the list forms work. One of the other features on the document library that you're going to love is copying files if i want to go ahead and copy multiple files over here it's it's just so easy now just click on copy and then click where you want to copy it to so if i'm going to say hey i want to i want to copy it over to dynamic crm site and just select the folder there's a folder right here just copy on it and bam all these three documents have been copied over click on and i can show that to you i'm going to click on the documents so it takes me back to the hql dynamic crm site and over here, I can see the three documents which have actually been copied over. Uh, there's also the copy link feature. I can actually select the document and then click on copy link, which is going to give me the link of the document. And I can just go ahead and copy and paste this anywhere. So overall, I think that this is, this is an extremely strong feature. These are some of the extremely strong features. And, uh, uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the new features of the SharePoint page itself. So, <clears throat> yeah, the subscription, which is canceled out, and it just keeps popping up. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features of the list form itself. Uh, these forms are really easy to edit to start with. Some of these new forms are really easy to edit. And when I try clicking on any of these, forms then like for example the dynamic crm form that i have or the page that i have i click on edit and the beautiful thing about it is that to start with i can actually go ahead and add new sections over here and these sections have got all these different layouts which is nowhere close to how you can do things in the classic ui so i can select one column two column three column and let's just say if i select two columns over here it just gives me this row layout. So for every single row, I can create multiple rows over here, and every row can have a completely different layout. The first row that I created has two. The second row that I've created has, uh, you know, has three. So I can actually create multiple layouts over here. And and of course, there is the modern web parts as well. There's a lot of new modern web parts that I can add over here. Maybe image web parts, maybe highlighted content web parts. It's going to pull up the documents from several different sites associated with it. It's going to show you can actually see how the properties of the web parts are over here. You can see the content source of this highlighted content. Uh, since this is a hub site, you know, one of the things is it says all sites in the hub, which means that it's trying to, let's just say, if you have 20 different sites within this hub site, it's going to aggregate all the documents, all the recent documents. From the 30 different associated sites of this hub site, pull it over and then display it over here. So, so there's a lot of different web parts, and and it's just it's just pretty beautiful just uh, just doing this, unlike before. And I can just go ahead and publish this document.
Uh, and and so right now there are no publishing workflows on this modern sites, and I've talked about this in my in my webinar where I covered modern sites and modern sites, which is communication sites and team sites. But pretty sure Microsoft has already uh, already has a limitation in mind. Uh, there's also other than other than a lot of these web parts. If you scroll down at the bottom, I'm going to jump over to the SharePoint side. By the way, if you jump down at the bottom, then you also have the comments web part over here. The comments web part is is local to only the modern UI. It does not exist in the classic UI. And all of these web parts, I'm sorry, all of these modern sites, maybe the modern team site or the modern communication sites that we have, all these sites are pretty much known as uh, as no script sites, which just makes it a lot more secure. All these sites are again no script sites, which means that unlike how you used to do that back in the classic. UI where you would just insert JavaScript code that's just not possible out of the box in the modern UI. This way, so so it just adds a lot more security. And this way, user with bad intentions cannot insert malicious script in the pages, which will run and do unwanted things when a user with more permissions logs into that page. So these sites by Microsoft has been developed to be more secure, but of course you can change the behavior. You can actually log in and then write down and then change some certain settings uh, so that so that scripting can be done on this. Uh, also there is classification in the modern sites which does not exist in the classic sites anymore. Do you see low up in the top? This is actually the classification. You can classify which of these sites you can classify the sensitivity of these sites when you are creating these sites and <clears throat> I can just show that to you real fast. I click on SharePoint and then click on Create Site. And as soon as I do that, let's just say if I'm creating a communication site and then I enter just test, it shows me site classification over here. Now, this site classification feature is not available out of the box with SharePoint. You will have to have your tenant admin write down a quick PowerShell script to enable this classification. But once you have this, you can classify what kind of data is being stored within the site. Is it high? Is it is it highly secure data? Is it medium security? Is it low security? And depending on that, depending on the classification that you have on these modern sites, it's possible to run policies. It's possible to run PowerShell scripts behind the back on a scheduled basis, which would, uh, you know, which would just do things for you. Like for example, hey, if it is if it is a high highly classified site, then I know that my company is going to be storing information like social security numbers and stuff like that in the site. And I don't want the site to be shared by external users. And when I say external users, these are the non-SharePoint, non-corporate office users that I've invited from Google, from Hotmail, from Yahoo, or any other site or any other uh, you know sites out there. And so I just don't want those external users to have access to sites in my organization which are classified as high. And when that's the case, you can use this classification, you can write down policies, you can write down PowerShell scripts and actually do certain things like even just kick out some of the external users. I have talked in depth about this in my previous webinar, which was deep dive with Office 365 groups and team sites and communication sites. And I have done a lot of governance talking about these as well in the past. Uh, and finally, I'm just gonna go back to any of my sites over here. And finally, the permission structure over here is definitely pretty different. I can click on on permission site permissions over here, and it just opens up a lot easier permission model in the modern UI versus the classic UI. So in here, you can see how I can just go ahead and add any users over here, or I can just remove any users. Click on SharePoint or any other site, exactly the same thing. The permission model is just different. And so it's just easier for me to go ahead and specify permissions as well. So hopefully you guys are enjoying, you know, some of these features that I have that I've listed over here. And of course, let's just not forget some of the other things like uh, like Office 365 groups. Let's just not forget some of the other things like Office 365 groups uh, and a lot of different tools. Uh, give me a second here. Window keeps changing. Uh, and a lot of different similar tools. Uh, now, when it comes down to 
Office 365 groups, I can go ahead and create these groups. I can, when it comes down to Office 365 groups, I can actually create these sites, these team sites, and these team sites are really integrated with, uh, you know, with the Office 365 groups. When an Office 365 group is created, a uh, uh, SharePoint team site is created, and I can create this Office 365 group from uh, several different SKUs within Office 365, and one of the most popular ones is, of course, Outlook. When I create the Office 365 group in Outlook, it creates team sites and creates a lot of different features behind the scenes, maybe calendars, a shared calendar, or maybe uh, or maybe notebook, maybe planner, or a lot of different options. I can just go ahead and and all these queues are being created when I create this this Office 365 group. And creating an Office 365 group is just not creating an Office 365 group is just not possible using the classic team sites. And and so. These are very tightly integrated. This, this is not the case with classic, with classic team sites. When you create classic team sites, there's no tight integration with Office 365 groups or any of these other tools like Planner or Notebook or any of that. Again, if you want to have more information about group about Office 365 groups, please watch my webinar that I've done in the past. I've covered a lot in it. So. Hub sites, I have just shown a little bit of hub sites of how these hub sites are. So this is the hub site in itself. Uh, I've created a hub site uh, to actually show and integrated all the different practices, maybe SharePoint, Power BI, Dynamics, CRM, Docker, Microsoft, or any other Windows Azure, machine learning, or any other practices that we have at Microsoft under one single banner, which is known as a hub site. And I cannot create these hub sites it's not possible to do create these hub sites in the classic UI. The classic UI does not even support. And let me show this to you real fast. So this is this is a, a team site which actually holds both classic as well as modern team sites. Oops, my bad. Sorry, wrong window too soon. Uh, so I have a modern site over here, and I have a classic homepage over here. So so this site that we are looking at right now. And if I switch back to the modern home page, this site is basically a hub site, okay? And I can associate several different sites to it. And in a hub site, this is the first thing that you see up in the top. This is the navigation that you see. It shows all the sites that have been associated. And you can see that it's obvious that when I'm on the modern page, and this is the modern page, when I'm on the modern page, uh, I can see the hub sites up in the top. If I switch over to the classic home page, the home page that that 20% of the people are used to looking at, then there is no hub site, you know, in the navigation up in the top. Uh, so all of that is pretty tightly integrated with the modern site itself. Uh, so let's go back. So these are the permissions that I've already shown you. By the way, this is on the left hand side. What you see is the SharePoint site permissions for modern UI. What you see on the right over here is the SharePoint permissions for the classic UI. So we just covered that, and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and talk about. So, so with this, I've talked about the modern UI features, which covers both uh, lists and libraries as well as pages. One of the things that I did not mention, uh, and it just hit me, was on the modern UI only. You can actually see if I go back to the modern UI only, I can see, I can see how uh, on any of the document lists and libraries. Uh, I can see that there is there is flow specified over here, and there's Power Apps if it's a if it's a list as well. So flow and Power Apps you won't see them associated with uh, you know on the classic UI list of libraries. It's there only when you are looking at. Uh, so let me just show you the Power Apps as well. So look at that. So this is so I'm actually on the list. So now I can actually see that there is a flow and there's power apps as well. The flow and power apps is now visible if you go to the classic, if you go to the list and libraries of the classic site. So this was one of the important things that I wanted to show you. So let's now talk about. So so far we've been talking about 
about the modern UI and then covered from end user perspective, which covers both developer and admin, kind of like educating on the modern UI. But now let's talk a little bit about the admin settings. And even though this is more kind of like for the tenant admin, but it's good to know even for developers, definitely for developers and even for end users. You're gonna see that there's a whole bunch of different features within the within the the, the SharePoint tenant that can actually be modified, uh, which actually reflect the classic versus modern settings. So to start with the SharePoint list and library experience, this is the first setting in the SharePoint administration tenant in the SharePoint tenant that the administrator is going to see. And you gotta make sure to experience the, 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 to the modern experience, you gotta make sure that this is the first option which is checked. Classic experience, new experience. Make sure that you have the new experience checked. As soon as SharePoint detects that there's a classic page and it does not break any of the compatibilities with modern UI, it's gonna switch over to, it's gonna automatically switch over to the new experience. Site pages is the second important one. Uh, just like how there is the wiki page and then the web part page site content types for the classic sites, there's a site pages content type. So you gotta make sure that you have this option selected, allow users to create site pages to allow the users to really go ahead and create brand new modern site pages. Same applies for OneDrive. Comments on the site pages, I just showed that to you, how the comments are there on the modern page. If you don't, if you want to enable them, just make sure that it's enabled from here. A couple more settings on the tenant side, which is site creation. If you want to make sure that the users can create these sites, then the modern sites, then make sure that this option is selected. Show the create site columns, users who have permissions to create columns. And I can show that to you real fast how that looks like. So if I go to my SharePoint homepage, and this create site button over here, this button which actually shows me the option to create team sites and communication sites, this option is available only when I choose the site creation option, only when the site admin chooses the, chooses the right site creation option over here. Now this is the setting on the level of the subsite itself. So now that the tenant is there, now that the tenant is configured, if you wanna disable or enable on the level of the site itself, uh, there's the setting that you can do, but it's gotta be done using PowerShell. It's a web scope feature, and this is the ID, and this is the name. Name of the feature is site pages. Again, this is the name of, this is the content type of the mark UI pages. So make sure that you have this feature enabled. By default, it is going to be enabled, but if you wanna go ahead and for some reason not have modern pages, then you can disable that as well. And the last thing, which applies to the tenant admin, the developer, as well as the end users, are, is the setting on the list and library. So if you go in the advanced settings, this is another setting that you're gonna see, which is display the list using new or classic experience. And this can override the setting that you have on the tenant admin if you have a you know default, if you have a modern UI to be selected and you just wanna choose a classic experience, it's gonna kick in if you choose this option. And But this option is local only to so the list or library. You will have to go to every list and library to do this. Uh, these are some of the new features of modern UI. I thought I'd just put all of them on one single sheet. This is pretty much what I've covered. I'm gonna cover what I haven't covered real fast, which is the future investment. This is Microsoft's future investment. This is where Microsoft is heading. So make sure that you start looking into this and make sure that there's not much investment or bare minimum investment done on the classic UI customization or branding or modernization. I'm sorry, customizations. This is faster everywhere. It's pretty fast compared to the classic UI and flexible organization. Remember how I just showed you the hub sites? Those hub sites bring in a very flexible organization. I've talked about that in the webinar, uh, and I will not be covering that in detail right now. Mobile friendly, compatible with all mobile platforms. All these devices are compatible with pretty much all different uh, tablets and mobile devices. Uh, and some of the new tools that integrate pretty well is Office 365 Groups, Modern Team and Communication Size, Power Apps Flow, and they're integrated with Microsoft Teams. And also, there's a lot more storage. Now, these site collections can have 25 terabytes of storage. Let's, let me go ahead and show you how you can switch between modern and classic UI as well. A second here, trying to find my windows.
So, so you can you can very easily switch between, uh, but this that's possible only as long as that's possible only as long as you are uh, within. Sorry about that. A second here. So if I'm actually looking at at any of these modern sites over here, and I see I could do right here in the edge. Uh, so this is I'm looking at uh, at a at a classic page which is being displayed as a modern page, uh, and the reason being that I have I have those settings on the admin I have on the tenant level, which means that any classic pages which do not break compatibility, they're going to be displayed as modern pages, and this is just one of them. And when you just look at that, you're going to see that down at the bottom on the left hand side, you can actually show return to classic SharePoint. That option lets you really return to the classic SharePoint. In the past especially in 2016 when I first saw the Mon UI, I was a big fan of this link over here and I would just keep switching back to Classic View. But I think that at this point in time, I would really wanna stay with the Classic View. So by the way, if I didn't mention that explicitly, then here's the exit Classic Experience, click on that. And this just pretty much takes you back to, uh, the, to the modern experience if you wanna switch back to the Classic. And again, this is, if you have created any sites, if you have created any of these sites within the modern sites, which is team on communication sites, you cannot switch them over. So this is the, the modern site that you know I just keep showing. And down at the bottom, even if I scroll down to the left, there really is not, you know, return to classic view feature. So it's possible only on pages which are classic pages are and are being displayed as modern modern pages. Another thing that I just want to show over here when it comes down to mobile friendliness is how responsive these are. So let me just open up. Let me just let me just show this to you in uh, you know in a tablet in a responsive manner, which is the settings of a tablet right here. This is how this page, this responsive page, is look is going to look right on. I apologize, not tablet, but but a phone itself. So look at that. You know, I mean, even though this page I have not implemented any responsiveness, I scroll down and it's sorted in the best possible manner that I want. You know, it shows my graphs, it shows my charts, it shows all of this. You know, and this is how it's going to appear. Some of these pictures from our conferences, and uh, so it shows all of these. You know, on this is how it's going to appear that right on the mobile devices on the iPhone. You can actually go ahead and, and change these settings, change the responsiveness, and take a look at how it looks like on different versions. Uh, but I'm actually using Chrome, and Chrome has this awesome feature to toggle device toolbar, and so I'm actually using that. But if I if I'm not doing that, just going back to my viewing this page in the regular browser and this is how it just looks like so so I'm pretty pretty happy with that responsiveness that I'm actually getting out of this and this is what I what you see over here are some of, is the feature comparison between classic and modern UI the biggest thing is there's no ribbon uh, there is a master page customizations, and this is for for branding purposes. Uh, there are no master page customizations in the modern UI, and I have mentioned all of those details, and you know, pretty clearly over here. On the workflow side, you can actually see that you know, as I just shown you, you see ship on designer workflows only on the list on the list in classic. But then, if you're looking at the list in modern UI, you're going to see ship on designer as well as flows over there. Uh, the modern UI automatically switches to classic, you know, if it finds incompatibilities, and and this experience of classic pages not showing up on modern pages might be a little frustrating. So this slide here would be very useful when it comes down to you know when it comes down to it not automatically switching. The first thing is if there are incompatible column types. The second thing is if there is limited access user permission logged on mode. The third thing is you know, if there are certain customizations like some of the templates, some of the list templates which are not being supported, uh, JS link code, which is very popular with developers for formatting columns, custom actions on the list that include certain script as well as script block, uh, which is very popular with developers for, for formatting the list and libraries. And uh, finally, if there is a list view, if there is more than one list view on any page, 
understand and also if there's a document said welcome pages. Uh, I see a question over here. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm just looking at your question, Rob. Uh, is there a list of reasons that uh, docking library will switch back to classic? Uh, and yes, it really switches back to classic if you have have, have uh, you know any customizations built into it. If not, I really don't see any reason for it to switch back. Uh, modern UI on prem versus online. So let's take a look at what are the features that I have within modern UI when it comes down to on-prem versus online. So in SharePoint 2016, modern UI is not supported. I have not seen that with feature pack, with the feature release pack too as well, but it's going to be supported in SharePoint 2019. And of course, it's in SharePoint Online. Modern team sites are supported only in SharePoint 2019. They're not there in 20, 2016. And one of the reasons being that these team sites the modern team sites connect with Office 365 groups. And Office 365 groups are is actually uh, created right in the Azure Active Directory app in the cloud as well. So even though the modern team sites are going to be created in SharePoint, are going to be available in SharePoint 2019, but they are not going to be integrated with Office 365 groups from what I hear. Modern communication sites, not there in 2016. It's going to be there in 2019. And finally, SPFX is a development platform, and the development platform is available all across 2016, 2019, and SharePoint Online. Let's talk about modern search. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a real quick review about modern search. Yes, there is modern search, and you would be surprised to see modern search. And, uh, and about this modern search, if I open up, so if I'm actually on my modern page over here, and if I just click in the in the search box, I'm gonna see a whole different load of options over here. And if I do a search over here, then yes, it's actually going to return me search results, okay? Uh, I can expand some of that, I can preview some of that, so it's nice and easy, and I can preview the documents and stuff like that. But guess what? You know, I can't really customize this page in any way. There is no customizations on this page. I cannot customize list uh, search pages like I used to do before. And I'll come down to one of the very important points in a second after I show you how search works within this document library as well. If I'm actually on this document library, I'm gonna close this properties panel over here. And if I do a search over here as well, then again, it actually shows me the search results within the list itself. And and I like it, you know, it's, 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 it's progressive as I type in the search, you know, kind of like trims down to what I'm looking for. Uh, and it shows me the search results within the view itself. But down at the bottom, when I actually take a look at expand searches to all SharePoint, and I click on this option, then it opens up another page, and it actually ends up showing me the classic page. Yes, it's actually showing me the classic page. So I've written down some of those feature comparisons over here, modern search versus classic search. Now, this is the first surprising thing that you're gonna get. Modern search is based off on Microsoft Graph. It is not based off on, it is not based on the search index like it used to be done before. It's actually based on Microsoft Graph. And for those who don't know my, what Microsoft Graph is, Microsoft Graph is, is a humongously new thing. I'm gonna do a webinar on that pretty soon. And Microsoft Graph, other than a lot of other things, connects people to documents and data. So, so the search is based entirely on Microsoft Graph. There's no control on the search content. There's no UI customizations as of right now. Microsoft might be thinking about it. So if you're a search savvy developer, like in the past, you have done UI customizations to, to search the classic search, like display templates and stuff like that. That's not happening right now, guys. And finally, it's personalized, which means that the Microsoft grab behind the scenes presents information to you, which is very personalized to you. So if somebody else does the same search, they probably might see a different result. And there's no way you can change the behavior. Expand search takes you to the classic search. No refiners and no result sources. On the left with classic view, with classic search, how you were able to see refiners on the left-hand side, there's no refiners as of right now. And now this is also one of the big things that Microsoft announced uh, in Ignite. 
which is a visual content intelligence, which means that it's able to extract information from images. So if you have any, so there's information like location and stuff like that from images, using some sort of artificial intelligence, it's able to get the information out of those images. Uh, so this is pretty much what I just covered right now. This is the this is the classic source page on the right hand side, and you can see that there's refiners, result types, and refiners on the left hand side, which is just not the case anymore. Let's talk about branding, guys. And uh, like in the branding section, I'm going to go ahead and cover a few things, which is uh, you know what are my branding options in modern UI. So if you are one of those guys who who have been doing a lot of branding, then and have been branding your entire site, and you have used master pages to do the branding, you have done alternate CSS to the, do the branding, just keep in mind that these two options are not a good idea anymore with modern UI. The way that you would actually brand modern UI is either you can use the classic themes, which are still supported, or there's a brand new thing which just got released with in, in, uh, in quarter two of 2018, which is, Tenant control SharePoint themes, which means that you can create these themes, which are tailored to, uh, you know, create these themes which are tailored to your organization, and then store them on the tenant level, and so that so that the users would have only these themes as an option to brand their sites and not the not any other themes. Okay, so it's controlled on the level of the theme itself. There's this new feature, you know, branding classic sites to the modern theme sites which has been released, which means that sites, which means that themes, which means that modern themes can now brand the classic themes as well. This is the new feature from Microsoft uh, that I have taken a snapshot from the Office 365 roadmap. Uh, and it's a good thing. Once you brand modern UI sites and the classic sites are being branded as well. And so pretty much, if you take a look at this sheet that I have, uh, this snapshot over here, then you're gonna see that if you change the look from the modern side, then this is what you see, the change the look. This is what you see, change the look part, okay? Whereas what you see on the extreme right is what you would see when you take a look at, when you try changing the look, you know, from the classic side. Uh, this is modernizing classic sites. Now, if you have, and I get this question a lot, and I have seen that question being asked even right now, which is, hey, Samir, we have this classic site, and we have hundreds and thousands of these classic sites, and I want these classic sites, I want to convert these classic sites over to the modern site. How do I do that? So these are some of the options that I have. Turn on the modern UI from tenant settings, as I just so shown you. The second two points over here are pretty brand new. Number one, you can connect the classic sites to the Office 365 groups, which is coming pretty soon. And on the right-hand side, I have the picture of how it's gonna look like. When you click on the settings, you're gonna see the option, connect to new Office 365 group. Yes, you can connect the classic sites. Last month when I was actually doing a webinar, I couldn't see this option, but now I see that this is gonna be coming out pretty soon. I can connect my classic sites to Office 365. And the last point over here is transforming classic pages to modern pages. So let's just say if you have thousands of pages, okay, and if you have thousands of pages, and if you want to go ahead and transform those pages, then SharePoint, uh, courtesy of the PNP community, have developed this, <coughs> have actually developed this, uh, this option for branding classic sites, for branding classic, uh, I apologize, for transforming classic pages. You can actually transform classic pages and and those classic pages are going to appear in those classic pages are going to be transformed over to the modern pages. Uh, this is by far uh, a command line utility that needs to be done only by uh, only by a developer or a tenant admin, and it cannot be done by uh, by end users. But it's going to let you mass transform pages, several pages, hundreds of pages, you know, uh, of the classic pages over to the modern pages. Uh, it is still in development. I would love to show this to you in detail, but there's a much that I can do right now. This transforming classic to modern UI is still in development. Uh, some of the web parts, they still don't get migrated over, but a lot of them do. Uh, another tool that I want to show you is, more, is SharePoint Modern User Interface Experience Scanner. So uh, in lines with you know, some of the questions that I've been getting over here is, hey, I have thousands of pages. 
how would I know if any of these pages, thousands of classic pages, how would I know if any of these pages can even be, you know, transformed over to the modern UI pages? Then again, courtesy of the PNP community is this command line utility that I can run and which I just did run. I can run it right now, it's gonna take hours. But when I ran it, it actually generated me these files, which actually shows me this is going to be very useful. It requires tenant and permissions to run this tool, but it's gonna crawl through all your hundreds and thousands of pages, and it's gonna generate these files. And these files are gonna show you, hey, if any of these custom pages, if any of these custom classic pages have got alternate CSS or custom actions or master pages, and because of the of which they are not be, or they cannot be you know, they cannot be, they're not visible in the modern UI, then it's gonna show you all of these headers over here. If your list has got any kind of customization and this customization could be, you know, the JS link, you know, which developers love or custom actions, which are not supported in modern pages, then those are termed as the block list and they're gonna appear over here as well. Same applies to block pages as well. So this tool is pretty good. It just scans the entirety of your, and this is the kind of like the report that it generated for me. Ignore custom master page, ignore alternate CSS, and ignore custom actions. Uh, I think that this tool is still in development a little bit, and there's still going on things going on right now. Finally, I want to talk about one of the most important things, and I think that I'm just going to pop up a poll real fast. And this is of the powerhouse of the modern UI. I was really impressed when this came out. Uh, bear with me for a second over here. I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. And I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to answer that. I know that we just have a couple more minutes left over here. All right, thank you. So. I see that the answer for site design, created templates using site design is 100% no. So this is a, a site design is a new feature of SharePoint, which was released in April 2018. It lets you create these templates. Yes, it lets you, it lets you create templates out of modern sites, something which was terribly missing. You know, like remember back in the days how you could click on a site that you have customized, click on save site as a template, and reuse the site over and over again. The feature was missing in modern UI, it was just not there. But with this release of site design, I can go ahead and create templates over here. Uh, this is pretty brand new, not a lot of people have done that. We have started developing templates for a couple of clients so far, and uh, and they just love it, you know? Uh, some of it might not be 100% intact, but hey, you know what? We have created some serious templates out of this site design feature from Microsoft. Publishing feature is not supported in modern sites anymore, which means that save as a template just doesn't work anymore with modern sites. So I have snapshots over here of, you know, when you create a brand new site, modern site, it's gonna appear like this over here. You're gonna see this new option, team site, you know, site design 01, that's just sample site that I was messing around with training. You click on this drop down, and then it actually lets you create a brand new site, a brand new site from the template that you just have specified uh, and on the right hand side you're going to see how uh, it's, it shows you the progress and just not that this is so powerful it's really very very powerful uh, um, this is so powerful that I'm going to be doing just a webinar just on this feature itself uh, I can create two true templates and this is all just using I apologize to end users they might not be doing it by themselves they cannot be creating these templates by themselves this is going to require using JSON and SPFX solution it lets you create these you know and it lets you create, for example, hey, you know what, you want to create some templates for HR, you can create templates for HR and they can see the templates over here. Not just that, you can scope these templates so that, hey, if it's somebody from the accounting department, they might not be able to see it. So only when HR logs in, they will be seeing these templates and not accounting. When accounting logs in, you can scope these templates so that they can see those, the templates which are specific to their department, not to them. So once again, I'm going to be doing a whole hour-long webinar on this and stay tuned and I'll show you some really nice site design templates. My final thoughts, okay? So let's talk about my final thoughts. I know we are just one minute over, but just bear with me for another one minute. Modern UI experience has been in development since 2016. In the beginning, when my clients had asked me about modern UI, I told them to stay away from it. Since it's pretty immature, 
But now I can see that modern UI is mature enough to recommend companies to do branding on it. You have already seen branding size for clients using modern UI. And with tenant control themes, theme support for classic site, theme support for hub sites coming soon, creating templates using site design, modern sites, and finally SPFX. And last but not the least, the mobile friendliness and responsiveness, modern UI is pretty mature to be invested in. You know, I would, going forward, I think all of this is going to be modern pretty soon. Classic temp, classic UI uh, is not, not that it's being deprecated, but I don't think Microsoft is going to be doing any more investment on that. So if you are thinking of doing any more investment, then go for the modern UI. Use the classic UI only if you want to use things like, hey, only if you have, you know, customizations already done or only if you have, you know, only if you want to use, you know, uh, uh, the classic search, those might be the reasons. But if not, I think that it's actually time that you start looking and digging into the modern UI. Finally, keep an eye on HUL Tech Talk Tuesday webinars. We'll be doing a lot more of these webinars and we'll keep you posted with, with everything that's happening. Please feel free to contact us for any branding requirements that you might have or any ship on implementation, managed services, IT staffing needs. We are Microsoft Go Partners on Office 365. SharePoint and would love to help you with the implementation. Take a snapshot of this picture, guys, please. Uh, there's a lot of important links over here and you can actually, you know, uh, about my webinars and, and, and a lot of different stuff. Finally, when I exit this webinar, you're gonna see a poll, you're gonna see a list of questions, please, and which is about the feedback. Please leave me a feedback. It takes a lot to put something like this together. It's all original content and it takes a lot to put a webinar like this, so please, Leave me a feedback so that I can improve myself and present you with much better content. Thank you so much. And I'm going to stop the webinar now. And as soon as I do, you're going to see the feedback questions. Please stay to answer those questions.